It's been a rough year homesteading to grow our own food with our son's hip. Rebuilding our house. A little extra farm losses. Rebecca's mom's ALS diagnosis. If that wasn't enough, my injuries. Although those major disturbances have dealt quite the blow, they haven't destroyed our dream to work together as a family on this homestead to grow most of our own food. This is our story of how in 2023, we as a family persevered through great struggle and by the end of it, found a new vision, a new awareness, another problem, introducing a solution. That new vision is sure to give us hope and should sustain us into the future. Early in the year, we wrapped up a 100-day challenge to clear two acres of this raw land, establish access, and establish water. We finished it up with getting an ever-flow waterer to the pigs and cutting our last tree. It's a little crooked. Josiah says, let's level it. He's afraid they're going to push it over. This will fill up and come out it will always be full. When it fills up, it'll come out that PVC pipe. It'll never be less than this. It's working. This is our drain line from the Everflow waterer. It needs to go into the creek. There, we got it from the creek up top. So whatever the animals don't use, just goes right back to the creek. Okay, well, it's draining so far. So far, so good. Oh, it's still working. <laughs> Water coming in, water coming out. Heck yeah. Okay, we got an Everflow waterer for pigs. You got no water chores for 12 days, and then you move this. And then you got no more water chores for another 12 days. Wow, it's hard to believe this is it. Just this patch here, it's more than a day's work. I mean, it's more than an hour. I'm pretty sure, you think we could do it today? Yeah. You want to go at that mountain laurel thicket? Yeah. Or do you want to kind of go at this area? Last tree of the two acres, which is probably three or four acres. Back up. That was it, huh? Woo! Right on the money. One minute to quit in time. Ironically, we got some major machinery at the end of the 100 days. Boy, would that have helped if we had gotten it earlier, which we ordered it months, months earlier. But still, we were super excited and know those two machines will help us greatly in the future of this homestead. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> yes. What's going on? Our truck water's here! Fine, Ken. What? Our truck <laughs> Papa kept it a secret! Hey, tractor! Tractor! <laughs> wow, that's that so big, cool! That was surprise. surprise! It was Did supposed you know? to happen tomorrow. Brand new track loader. I dare you to find a speck of dirt. Right there, on the track. Oh! On the tracks. Of course it's on the track. Take it back. If you, you ever hear that beeping, you get, you look, pay attention. Yeah! There it is. I'm not My triggers right here. So this is to drive it that's forward, forward backwards, back. sideways, and this, this is, is for your bucket. That's up, and that's all there is to out. it. So proud of you! Finally oh, bought this machine. You're proud of me. I'm proud of you. You know that. I hope you do. That was super fun. Okay, it's my turn. Now it's Jonah's turn. His first grading job. Level this out. Not bad. First grading job. Hey, how was it? It was good. Yeah? A little harder than I thought, but pretty good. How did you deal with the excess? With Lucky? We just left it. Okay.
track loader can get three loads in the time Lucky could get one. Look what's here. It's here, my boys. We're gonna be pulling up some stumps now. Two buckets, big ones attached. We're gonna get some serious permaculture design done with this thing. Serious earthworks coming right up. First impression? It's really big. First impression? It's, it's pretty big, I guess. We're gonna get so much done with these two new machines. Yeah, back away, it's how you swing that. Jonah's turn. Josiah's going at it. Definitely one of the biggest struggles of the year was the loss of our son and his hip injury. And not only do we lose him, we lose mom and others because we have, the others have to step up and, and, and help him. So he's missing, but others have to give away energy too to help. Tomorrow he's going to surgery and I'm more nervous about that than if I was going in myself. As a parent, I would rather take the hit. This time, he's got to take the hit. He's getting put to sleep at 15 years old. They're telling us it'll be easy. It's an outpatient surgery, but maybe I got a little PTSD from the first time they told me, oh, it's going to be easy. It's going to be a 10-minute procedure, and then it got super complicated. He's gonna go to surgery tomorrow because his bones died uh, or something like that. Do you think he'll get ever get better? Yeah. With hip dislocation, you are stretching the blood vessels and then when you put it back in, those blood vessels can die and then those blood vessels, while they're regrowing, the bone will die once the blood flow returns back to the ball, then it will round back out again. And so the screws are in there, and just because of the angle, you can't tell how much room you actually have. Jonah got in this dirt bike accident and dislocated his hip, and it ended up not being so cut and dry. Now, five months later, he's still limping. I don't like to think about what happens if it doesn't go well and he doesn't completely heal. He's already one inch shorter in one leg because it's not growing. They're all saying it will catch up, but they also said all we gotta do is just pop this hip back in and he ended up with two surgeries. It's nerve-wracking to be doing this, but at the same time, I, you know, we don't really have an option. The risk of keeping the screws in and then them poking through and potentially causing more damage, which would mean another surgery. Look at it this way, at least his feet work. Could have been worse, could have gotten paralyzed or something crazy. Something bad, worse could have happened. This might be the last time you get to put your socks on your 15 year old son, babe. Probably. Cherish the moment. Put these socks on these feet a lot of times. Yep, there we go.
to go. Okay. So we're not going to open this whole thing up again. Okay. Probably maybe an inch of it. Because they actually. How long is this going to be? They said an hour and a half. Okay. So 10 a.m. All right. Okay, so should they just started. All right, thanks, bye. Okay, they called update. They got him in, no issue, and they got him started, no problem. Lily just texted me. She asked me what I was doing. <laughs> I told her I was just waiting. Y'all's text relationship is hilarious. It is. That's fine. The screws came out, no trouble. Uh, checked to make sure everything's nice and healed mm -hmm. and stable, that the two pieces, you know, are stuck together right. the way they should be. That was great. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think we're good there. We're just yeah. waiting for the holes just to fill in. Waiting for the holes to fill in. So I'm Kim, I'm the one who spoke with on the okay. phone. I took some chairs there if you guys want oh, to thank you. use them. Thank you. But yeah, Sleeping Beauty's doing good. We're good. Good sleep, right? You're fine, I get it. Mom's gotta be mom, right? Here, I can lower him. <laughs> really small compared to his <laughs> compared to his um oh it's down low at the bottom of the scar mm -hmm. wow uh -huh. what do you think that's <laughs> <laughs> speedy recovery okay yeah thanks all right see ya i got you i got you Put your feet in there Say goodbye to that wheelchair. Say goodbye to that hospital. Hopefully for a long, long time. Look at this light You got it? You need help. I got it. You got it? Yeah. Is it sore? Yeah. They said it would be sore. See how I'm going like that? Yeah. Gotta fix Why do you that. think that is? Because my hip is being pulled up from all the tightness in here. Mm. And that's making when I go down, I'm not able to stop myself from going to the side. Does it hurt? Yeah, it causes a little bit of pain in my back. And as far as you know, what do you think is wrong? That I just need to get, that I just need to fix the tightness and put my um, pelvis um, back to normal. Okay. It's kind of crooked. Are you hopeful? Mm -hmm. You think you'll walk normal again? Mm -hmm. Let's see what you got at the top of the week for your four appointments. You got chiropractic, acupuncture, physical therapy, and the surgeon all this week. We're here waiting to go in. How are you feeling? A little nervous. Can you do this? Okay, with your palms on. Yep. And breathe in. You take your hands and put them through your legs like this. And bring that leg up to you. Yeah. I'm gonna light this on fire. I'm gonna go like this and pop it on your skin. Flame pulls out the oxygen. So it's gonna suck your skin in there, but what it's doing, it's moving your lymph system. There you go. It's gonna free your, um, your muscles are stuck. You're trying to open your muscles. Does it hurt? No, it just feels different. This side seems like it's much higher. It seems like it's pulling. Yeah, and look how purple it's turning yeah. so yeah. far. The, the ones you put in first are stinging a little bit. Yeah, do you want me to lighten them a little bit? No, it should be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little guy right there. This is the one I'll slide. How'd that feel, Jonah? It felt fine. Is that a big one? No, it's a tiny one. How's that feel? It's super tender. You feeling it? Yeah. Do you feel anything different? <laughs> yeah. I've never been cupped. That's not as bad as I thought it would be. I saw Papa had it done once. Deep breath in and out. Where? This is to calm you. Hopefully it didn't poke you. Gonna take the needles out. How's it feeling? Good. You feeling relaxed? Yeah. That's what it does for me. Yeah. This last tip is just like so high. We started doing acupuncture and then of course I think we're gonna start coming weekly to you. <laughs> and then also PT. That's a cranial muscle. Nice. I was chiropractic. 
helped me a lot. I'm walking so much better. He's been joining me in the H-Bot hyperbaric chamber. How do you think that's been helping you? I can't tell the difference, but it probably has helped me in some way. He's been pretty dedicated I'm about it. My, Makes me dedicated about it. I'm helping my bone grow, so I won't feel a difference. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> You ever get nervous in this thing? Not anymore. What do you do while you're in here? I just watch some stuff on YouTube. <laughs> Was that what you're doing? What are you watching on YouTube? You guys grind hard plumbing, they build go-karts and stuff. How do you feel it is? It's like it's getting better. Better than yesterday or the same? I think it's better than yesterday. We're not quite the inch and an inch and a half that you were before. It's a lot closer. Right now, I'm not restraining your leg anyway, so if you need to move it, you can. You're determined, dude. Where do you get this determination? I just want to be back to my normal self. Oh, wow. For reference, it's probably, what, 45 degrees out here? Are you going too? Yeah. Do you just jump in or do you wade in? You wade in. But you gotta time us. This is so cold. Oh, you want me to put the timer on? Yeah. Eight minutes? We're gonna do five minutes. <laughs> no, you only need three minutes. Okay, then do three. You could do five if you want. It's probably 55 degree water. Just go for it, man. Woo! <laughs> why did I do that? Did he say, why did I do that? It's gonna ease up in five seconds. Gets easier at the 30 second mark. I can't believe your mom and I are gonna put one of these in our house. You wouldn't have a pond in our house? No, a <laughs> cold plunge. Colder than it was against Trinity. Guys, get your shoulders on No, there. I got my legs in. Those Come on. The legs you gotta get the core. Hecklin from the bank. You're 10, good. 9, good. 8, eight, 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 7, eight, 6, eight, 5, eight, 4, eight, 3, eight, 2, eight, 1. Woo! <laughs> Proud of you guys. Given that we didn't have our oldest son, and we needed to get all those stumps that we'd left during the 100 day two acre challenge, I hired my distant cousin Andrew to help make short work of those stumps in that new two acres. Today we're getting large scale professional graders to help us clear some of these bigger trees inside of our recent two acre clearing project. calling it for the day. I'd say in one day we got a little over half. This side of the creek is more than that side of the creek. And they're pretty much done with this side of the creek. Are we gonna have a little secret pasture back here? I know. Because there's all our other pastures in our house. You can't, you won't be able to see it back here in the summer. I know. Or do we want to clear for a view? I don't know, we'll see. Do we have to make the decision right now? No, in fact, you want to be slow taking trees because you can't put them back. Yeah, and it takes a long time for them to get this big. That's funny, we did all this today. I'm already looking at what next. Smell the roses. Justin, so Take are we burning this smellers. tomorrow? No, no, it's going to need to dry out a little bit. Just kind of taking a moment. Watching him work. Watching just. It's not really working. It's the greatest joy people have is watching somebody else work. Yeah. And he's having fun. So we're fun. all having fun.
They got Josiah on a job clearing this brush. You got about 30 minutes and then we gotta go to the chiropractor. Okay. Let's see what these guys have been up to. They've beveled this bank. This is like all usable pasture right here. Look at the lilies coming up. You guys like our tree island? I like our tree island. This was especially bad ravine. And now we'll have access. We can get from that pasture up to our new one up there. Our new one here. Oh my gosh, just look at that. You got a better view up there? Yeah. Yeah? What excites you about this? Having more acreage. For your motorcycle? More for cows and sheep. This is a nice view. What's exciting you? All the new um, grass we'll have for all the cows and the view. Mother Nature is a modest gal and likes to be covered up. The problem is we just stripped her of two acres to create more pasture to grow, more meat and dairy for our family. Taking a page out of Mother Nature's handbook, it's our number one priority to get her covered again. We must protect her before the rains come and wash away that hard-earned topsoil. It's working great, thank you. You coming to help? I mean, I'm coming to be out here. I didn't know you guys wouldn't have pitchforks. This means three things. We've got to smooth her out by hand, like with bow rakes and shovels, and get what the big machines couldn't get, the fine stuff. The other thing we gotta do is put down choice seeds. We like nature's seeds, their southeast dairy cattle mix. The most critical is cover her up with something. For us, we have spent hay and we have hay. We'll cover up with that. Spread it very thin. This looks like a daunting task. Doesn't feel that way when we say, let's just go to the tree there. From this ridge to the tree, to the edge and then we'll look at our next section and it won't be as intimidating. Let's see if we can't do this section right here. Hopefully this is gonna be faster. We didn't have to load Sally with hay. We've got the hay in place. Hopefully spot? it's faster. It's a great spot. Grab it by hand. Let's cross our fingers. This is fast.
The hay is protecting the soil from being washed away. That place is rapidly blooming and booming. And the work we did this week, we will reap the benefits of that forever. But from now on, we're reaping the benefits of that. And I get to experience that the rest of my life. And I get to go to the grave knowing that those behind me have a better place. Now that we had successfully pastured two acres of our forest, now it was time to forest two acres of our pasture. Here we are. Trees. Another box. 80 something odd trees. Fruit trees for forestry are pastures. These trees are already starting to bud a little bit. They came last week. We didn't have time to plant them, but we got to get them in the ground. It can be really hard on them if they start to bud. First thing we got to do, the bottom of our valley, the creek, take elevation. 2290. We want to get 50 feet up from the bottom point to get out of the frost line for these frost sensitive fruit trees. Got our supplies, T posts, and woven wire. What does that have to do with trees? Well, we got to protect the little trees from our animals, from deer. Oh boy. I hope these are not too big for the auger, or we're going to be post hole digging. Should be bare root. That's a lot of seed. Mm. That's probably a shovel. The nectarines and the peaches need to be up higher. Everything's above the frost line. Okay. Josiah, we're gonna see how many can we plant in 20 minutes. How many do you think? Five. Five, I love it. We've got our rules. Honey crisp needs to be planted with a Granny Smith, King David, or Arkansas Black. It's Arkansas Black. We're gonna cover more than five in 20 minutes. There we go. First tree planted. Two minutes and 45 seconds. We got another one planted. Here, let's put this wood chips around the trees we just planted. Maybe the hair deeper. We need a plant to top that root. Hey, we're halfway there, 10 minutes. How many have we planted? At least five. I did not think we were gonna plant 10 in 20 minutes. Come on, let's go plant the rest of these trees. Yeah. It would go faster if I wasn't chasing a two-year-old around. But it's the two-year-old that this is all about, really. Eight more minutes. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I bury it. Come on. You wanna help bury? Yeah. Put it all in like that. Well, that was 23 minutes. How many did we get? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You That's one every two it? minutes. Oh, was that past the thing you guys thought you guys were gonna do? Oh yeah, way past. Whoa. I was gonna be happy with two. And things were on the up and up for us on the farm and we got piglets. Oh, look at that. We gotta get them some hay. They're shivering. That, that one's probably not gonna make it. No, it will. Let's get them fed too so they get distracted. This ant could have brought this pig over for all we know. I saw it walk over. We gotta get this one other one fed. He's gonna bother us. Really? Did we not have any scraps? Put it in three buckets so everybody can have even scraps. Here. Over here. Let's get the stuff in while we can. Next time we're gonna do three buckets with three even layers of scrap, then three even layers of milk. <sighs> you don't need to be afraid of the pig while he's eating. That's why we feed them then do the management. We should probably put the hay in there. They're shivering. This one's still over here. Wait, this is the chicken. 
Here, I'll hand it to you. I hand it to the stringer. Did she lay down on one? She's a good mom. She did not lay down on it. How many did she have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She had nine. Yes. Picks for everyone. Yeah, sure. Start putting her in the stanchion. This one's gonna find something soon. There we go, look. I also worked very hard to train a new heifer to milking. It wasn't easy. But it was a really good experience for me, and I'm glad it happened. And in the end, we were successful. Wow! This didn't end at all how I thought it was going to. There was a struggle, but it wasn't the one I thought it was. I knew that it was going to be a struggle to train her. She's never been milked. This is a new mama. This is a heifer calf. And so the struggle would be time, taming her, training her to get into the stanchion. So we started several weeks in advance. Is she letting you pet her? Dude, we have like three weeks. She's gonna have a baby, and we won't be able to milk her. Okay, come come to this side. Two weeks away exactly. Randolph has installed a little stanchion, just zip ties, so it's super temporary. Vanilla, you think you're ready to get in that? You think she'll go? Maybe. Today, maybe not. Jonah, what do you think? You think she'll go? I have no idea. Never been in a stanchion before. Call it for today? No, a couple more tries. I think she can do it. She's getting more greedy, you can tell. Good first day session. We've gotten further than the last time. Come on, you almost did it. All right, good training session today. I wonder happens if I do this. Let's just leave it right there. So close. Are you gonna get in there today? Plan B. You get a rope halter on her, you gotta first get her with a leash on her. Let's get a rope halter. See if she'll calm down and eat a little bit more with this rope halter on her head. Here goes nothing. Uh-oh, she can get out. Too wide. We just gotta get her in there and calm and eating some. I'm not gonna hurt you. We can maybe squeeze these shut. Have a snack. There we go. I'm happy about that. Scratching down there when she's eating. Come up when she's not. Swell a little bit with milk. That's good. Let her loose and kind of be on her own. Kind of let her enjoy herself in it. What do you think about that, Gideon? Cool. We trained her. Now tomorrow, will she go on her own without the rope halter? We'll see. Are you gonna go in the stanchion without a rope halter today? That's all you gotta do. Just walk in, you're safe. Oh look, she got one horn through. It's gonna be real wild when she has a baby. She ain't gonna, she's gonna be more hesitant. She's bagging up and she's got mucus. And just goes to eating like we didn't just have an epic struggle. One week to do day. She's definitely showing signs. Today is the day. Let's give it six minutes. Need that there, I'm gonna get some blocks to raise that up. You gotta stand there and block her. Did you guys see that? She almost went in. Y'all didn't block her last time. Well, see if this will do it. She did it. I put it on some blocks. So it's not such a I'm not gonna worry about shutting the gate on her today. Just get her comfortable putting her head in there. She came out, and that's okay. We're gonna get a bunch in there today. Look at that. Maybe I should get the other blocks to make it a little easier. Ah, oh, she's fine. Eventually the blocks need to be taken away, so she's doing it just fine. Vanilla, we made huge headway. One week to go. Her udder's getting big, look at that. You're gonna be in calf soon. She doesn't know what coming, or she does. We got mucus hanging off of that. You're gonna be an ant, honey. Six days to due date. You're gonna hop right in today. We got it set up. Get your taste. There it is. Close this on her. Now come down here, get in, and see if she's gonna let us milk her. A little bit more every time. I'm gonna keep my hand on her. She's getting used to that hand. She's not kicking me, she's just moving her foot forward. Okay, we're off, we're off. 
Enough of that udder training today, huh? Hey! Oh, stepped on my foot. I'm gonna be out here at an angle, that's cool. I'll wait till she eats, then I'm gonna crush her udder. Now my hand. Every day it gets better. Tomorrow we'll squat. Grabbing her teeth. She's holding still. We're gonna be just fine. I think we just do this every day until the baby comes. So I'm pretending like I'm got milking here. He's letting me. She'll have a frenzy when the baby comes, but at least this will be in her head. One day to due date. You gonna be on time? You gotta take these due dates with a grain of salt. She didn't even step this time. She's gonna be just fine. All right, she's trained. Hey, you better get some practice here because we're gonna have three cows in milk and you're the most likely candidate. Vanilla. Four days past due. I'm a little surprised you didn't have the baby because it's like 19 degrees out here. Sometimes that's how, that's how things go. Six days overdue. You like doing that job? It's okay. It's okay, you can tell the truth. You like that? No. You do like that ice cream though that comes out of there. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, her udder's gonna burst. I figured and hoped that she would just give birth without it. And we'd come out, we'd see a happy calf who had nursed. 12 days past due date. And look what we have here. Look like she just had it, huh? I don't think you need to get off on her We need to get them up away from this fence. What do you think, darling? She's so cute. She's such a good mom. She's on him. We always go through this. It's the mother in me. Well, it's the cowboy in me. The mother in her wants me to help. It's already like, mom, stop. Will you run and get me the rope halter? She's not going to do it because she's so enamored with the baby. Billy, <laughs> can you go get me my car? Let's get out of the line of fire. <laughs> Wow. We're gonna remove one obstacle from nursing. She's sore. She's not used to that. She's a heifer. Back in. It's gonna be colostrum. She's standing very still for me. That's nice. Probably got a half a gallon right there. Not bad. That's colostrum. The milk comes in in a few days. It's a superfood. We're gonna mix it with the other milk. The kids will never know it. So just I don't know it. You'll probably watch for the date. Milk's a little salty. And if you're thinking about it, you'll definitely taste it. The, the colostrum's a little salty. Now here we are. 48 hours later. She walked in the stanchion herself. And look at that score. Also, it's spring and I'm the apron wearing permaculture chicken ninja master. And we brought in our annual flux of chicks. Hello. Just yes. letting you know your baby chickens have arrived. Is it just one package or there's two? That, there's uh, two of them. I think we sight the forest crash. Chicks, turkeys. They want warmth more than they want anything else. So we got that going. They haven't eaten. They're just living off the mama's egg. Let's see if somebody will find it. They're packing. How many times have you done this? Let's see, since we got back from the Red American Farm Tour. Yeah, so did five it years. That too. Yeah, five or six years. In other words, you don't know. You can't yeah. count. Here, let's put that out here. One's dead? Yeah. One or two dead? This one? It's pretty good. I always expect to shut the door and not hear anything, but, cut, but then there's this man rush right there. Our bulletproof, rat proof. Skunk proof. Mouse proof. Mouse proof. Snake proof. Brooder. It's basically a cage fight in there. Yeah, like half inch wire mesh there. everywhere. Tin around the sides. Framed mesh. roof with half inch wire mesh. There's mesh under the tin all the way around. Yep. There's mesh goes up the side of the wall. It's up high for to accommodate the deep bedding. It's about 18 inches up high. You step over into this one, the deep bedding's lower. You probably only have to switch it out maybe every two years. Add a little bedding in each time. The microbial life in the bedding is a heat, but it's also a sanitizer. Look at this one, it's so cute. You like the gray one? Yeah, 
There aren't, there's only one gray one. Then one of the most exciting, yet stressful things happened. We moved out of our house, our beloved Holler house, of 20 years. We moved across the street to a small guest cabin on the farm so that we could get ready for our ultimate homestead house remodel. Back, we gotta get every single thing out of this house. We have five working days, can we do it? I don't know. Including all this. <sighs> what are we gonna do with all these freezers? Trinder Bud's going out for sale. And we have plenty of distractions. Squirrel! Appointments this afternoon. I said, Mom, what would make us feel good if we got done in an hour and a half today? Fifth of the way done. We're gonna tackle your room. How you feeling about it, Lily? Glad we got rid of some of the stuff we did? Yeah. We've got a pile here we really need to deal with. I'll call it Darcy style. You don't clean out a room and make a pile and then not deal with the pile right away. Hey, wouldn't it be easier just to be minimalist? Yep. Mom can't even come in here. It's so overwhelming. So we gotta get it to a spot where she can come in. Those boxes overflowing need to be condensed down to more boxes. We got it to where you could come in here, Vec. Right. You feeling overwhelmed? It's so very overwhelming. I'm going after these dreaded freezers. They've got to go somewhere. I don't know where. But we should start by going through them. Perhaps the market pigs will be happy today. Let's go ahead and render this pig pack. Put the ice packs right here into here. He wants to sell. I'll get the corner. All right. Fridge, freezer combo cleared up. The movers will move empty fridges and freezers. Get in, throw those styrofoam coolers down, please. This one yeah. is dispersed over there and over there. Also gives us a count of chicken. We've got about 100. Call the inquirer, folks. The roads are down to one chest freezer. And one, two, three. Let's get this mess cleaned up and we'll call it a day. Ta-da! Feeling good. Becky! One day to moving out. I feel really sad about oh, that. Oh, no, sad. Because this has like been our home for 20 plus years. Is your room packed and ready to go? Yeah, except for some clothes I'm gonna wear. What about y'all? Y'all need some work. We need a lot Y'all work on this. We got all these coats. It's getting real. There's an echo in here. Not one thing on the shelf. Let's hit this area while we're doing shoes, my man. I like how this feels, okay? So this feels done and ready to go. This is feeling good. You're getting there, babe. We got about three hours. It is moving day. We are going out of the holler house and into the cabin, getting ready for this remodel. We could seal these boxes if you need us to. This all goes to the cabin. You put in specific rooms, like do you need somebody over there showing you where to put stuff? So it doesn't need to go to specific rooms? It would help, okay. okay. the first to go there one time to show us what room is what. Okay. Plan is taking the couches, or taking the furniture, so all these boxes don't get in the way over there. That's pretty smart, these guys are very nice. Big, strong, Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of guys. This is good. You back on the electric bike? Woo! How many kids get to do that, Josiah? <laughs> Going back to your bedroom. Yeah, like what is that? It's a bit of a downsize. We've been in smaller since the bus on the Great American Farm Tour. Our stove's coming over. Our fridge's gonna replace this one. I believe we're putting another fridge right there. Somehow we've gotta fit in our dining room, kitchen stuff. Rebecca had this brought over. Stainless steel table for extension of counter space. This is all the counter space that's in this thing. Right here? Yep. Do you know where that fridge is going? Because we're swapping it. I'm not sure where it's We can going. ask them when we we're gonna have to move the table again. And where would you like the table? Yeah, whatever you like, we're happy. Thank you so much. There we go. All right. Well, that's 
different, isn't it, guys? A little bit of stuff left here. The true test is, can you get a dirt bike in here? Really? <laughs> really? Woo! The fun? Yeah. Are we rednecks or what? If we don't become minimalists after this, I swear we're gonna become minimalists. Nothing like moving to motivate you to get rid of junk. This isn't as bad as I imagined. Kind of cozy over here. Having our stuff here makes it feel more like our yeah. place. And it's real now. We're remodeling, honey, because we ain't moving stuff back yet without an immaculate homestead house. Just moved in yesterday, you can see. It's a mess. We're just realizing how extra we are. Like this table. It was roomy over at the Holler House. That's where we're remodeling. Lily is hating on that fridge. Mom had a late night thought. Move the fridge over here. Move the shelves over there. Get a smaller table. This table's a little extra with its width. Somebody left the fridge open. Yes, we need two fridges. We'd hope to put this in here and open it this way, but this counter gets in the way. The animals don't care that we move. We gotta go. One of the biggest things, this tub. This tub is for children and you can take a shower. Rebecca took a bath this morning and her legs were covered. That was it. This is good. Room for a freezer. The master closet is amazing. Maybe there should be less space in there and more space in the top. Uh, yeah, there could be some redesign for sure. Rebecca is working on seeing if she can't get a deeper tub. Tubs are crucial for us for our Epsom salt bath. I bet you the problem is gonna be is there's only so much width here. We are eating outside. It's sunny and lack of space in here. End of day, you guys want a tour, it's picked up. I love books in the living room. Yes, I love books. We got a nice view of the holler though, and the garden, and the chicken. Is it as bad as you thought? A little bit. Worse? Oh uh, yeah. It's worse? In some oh, no. ways. In what ways? So tiny. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's not even worse than that bus, huh? Sorry. Of course you didn't, you didn't really like living in that bus, did you? Yeah. This is our home, buddy. Our eggs are over here, now this is the kicker. She got the shelf over here. It's a little tricky, so you want that bowl. You kind of just have to. <laughs> it's there definitely go. a little harder to yeah. deal with it, but in the long run, it's much nicer. Hey, the Legos have revived. They cleaned out their Lego room, and I'm so happy to see them playing Legos. You got a tractor? Dad, Dad. What are you building, Jonah? This thing. How are you feeling, that. you and your hip? Good. Let's show them your back. Woo! You got cut. Gideon's into it. He came and asked me if he could buy some more Legos today, I'm thinking. You can't walk in your room because of your Legos. No way. And look at this tidy room. Actually tidy. I'm not gonna show you my room. It's still it's still work in progress. And honestly, my worst fear of coming over here is not coming through, Rebecca. It's bright in here. It's the year I did Randolph ingenuity. We have a lot more light. Especially in the afternoon, because that's we're getting the sun setting right. sun. Tonight we feed beef ribs, onions, apples, gold, southern coffee. And bacon. Pork ribs. These are pork ribs, Boston butt, and baked beans. I don't know what got into us the day after we moved. Now uh, that's a feast. Hey, our first dinner together inside the cabin. It has begun. The Holler House is never gonna be the same. This is the point of no return. Yeah, you wanna go get our uh, thing jig? Good morning, Randolph. Good morning. Rebecca's got a big old list for you. Randolph is on remove light duty. We should probably get some shots of this before. getting taken down to its bones. And we've already made big headway on ceiling. Come on, if you won't go get it, I'll go with you. Get our crowbar. You start right here. You just gotta get one going and then you'll... There you go. You're into this, huh? Josiah, you get to help. You get to tear up your home and you get in trouble. Board ceiling off now. Hold on, let's do the trim next. Now he's going at the popcorn ceiling. I don't know if we can be in here. Do we even have masks? Randolph to the rescue. He had some masks. Got your mask on. I watched a YouTube video on this. I'm not sure if this is going to help us much, but you get your hands in there. And then when you don't have a hand spot, make one with your hammer. I would like to wear glasses, but you can't wear a mask and glasses. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, it's different. Lily, there's no turning back, babe. Look at this. Let's get a cabinet out. Where'd I put what do you think, Beck? I don't know. Hey, there's no turning back now. I know. <laughs> what are you scared of? What happens if we uncover something that we can't fix? He's looking diligently. Oopsies. You guys are having too much fun with that. You getting with it, buddy? Yeah. Oh my. He's got the big gun on now. He's <laughs> having too much fun. You having the most fun? Probably. We got a job for Josiah. We're gonna push it to the deck. I'll stop you, okay? We got the gate open. We can just throw it all in there. Dean, you've been working all day. Good job, buddy. You too, bud. I think Randolph's prepping our tomorrow. They're gonna want to rip this off tomorrow. Well, we'll have her ready. Okay, good deal. This one'll be fun. You'll be able to knock a hole in that. What's the plan, Randolph? Let's get this out of here. Okay. Get rid of the floating shells. Day two demo. You want to go at that wall now? Boys, this is your chance. There you go. Oh, you got the big sledgehammer. Bit tougher than I thought, but we're making headway. There you go, Gideon. Stretch. All right, boys, I gotta go uh, separate the coat, all right? Look at this. What y'all look at this? That's so much better. Wow, that's opening it up a lot. There's nothing like a moving to make you a minimalist. Look at the progress we've made so far. I just walked from the kitchen to the bathroom to Lily's room. You guys see it though? Can you see that? Yeah. This is gonna be really open. I get this one out to get that one out. I know, that's, yeah. the, that's the story of the game in here. How big? Is there an echo? Echo? Oh, what do you think Boots would say about this, Rebecca? <laughs> I don't know. He'd probably think we were crazy. Yeah, he definitely this. think we're crazy. I don't think he would. I don't think yeah. he would approve. <laughs> when it rains, it storms. We were in for several more setbacks. One major one being Grandma's ALS diagnosis. Grandma and Grandpa have not been with us the last couple of weeks because mm -hmm. Grandma is in a intense two, three week quarantine yeah. for a treatment for ALS. Bulbar onset ALS. For people that don't know, tell them what the world that is. That's serious. ALS is Lou Gehrig's disease and ALS stands for something that I cannot pronounce. It is a motor neuron disease and it basically the motor neurons are uh, dying in her brain. It started with her tongue, so that's the bulbar onset mm. portion of ALS. And so it started with back in September of 2021. She was like, my tongue just feels like it's big. It feels like I can't enunciate. It feels like I'm having a hard time talking. I, at the time, did not hear a difference. Like I was like, you know, oh, I didn't know what it was. She went to several doctors in our area and they Dude, couldn't say anything. Yeah. A dentist finally. So, out, didn't he? yeah, so she it did. It just kept getting worse. Right, so it just kept progressing slowly, very slowly. Mom said that when she was telling him about her problems, like he went white. He was like, hmm. like, you need to see a neurologist. At that same time, my mom was also getting in with a ear, nose, and throat doctor because the primary care physicians weren't listening. The ear, nose, and throat doctor did an MRI, maybe a CAT scan. I can't remember. I, she had a bunch of testing done. She had blood work done, a brain scan done. It was conclusive that it was not MS. They ended up 
referring her to a local neurologist. That local neurologist did an EMG and said that he thought that it was ALS, but he wanted her to go and see an ALS neurologist, like a specialist. So it all started in September. This is now like March of 2022 so like a year ago mm. and so then we were but she's still physically able yeah so she's she still is in her mouth. And a lot of people are telling us that's crazy because uh this is usually it's usually when als gets to your mouth it's a very quick onset it's very fast it's very quick um and it hasn't been Correct. So my mom's is very slow progressing mm. and it's, you know, and it's been going on for a while. Like right now in April of 2023, it's been 20 months that she has had this and it's progressed, but not really. Like she doesn't have a hard time swallowing. She doesn't have a hard time breathing. Like she doesn't have any of anything else really to do with um, ALS like symptoms so it's super slow this is not an aggressive form at all and you remember that mama pig that gave birth to those piglets yeah she died when they were two just two weeks old it died overnight how old are those piglets two weeks. that's our only hope were they eating any grain just I I don't know did that one just eat yeah but they can't survive from just grain maybe they can they might be just old enough are they getting anything so sad gave them some skim milk they probably need whole milk i don't think they're getting anything she looks sore from them scratching her trying to get something i doubt they know how to use this nipple water and you're gonna see if that bottle works and if it does you're gonna get more bottles i hope somebody has bottles they do like that. Tell them they do they have tractor supply I think that bucket is the best idea. She still had placenta and stuff in her. Oh my bar. I came around the corner and hit the greenhouse handle. They're not nursing. I mean, they're too wild. I mean, we haven't handled them. They're little piglets. Probably train them to if we have to, but we think they'll get hungry enough that they do figure it out and drink out of that pan. Oh my word. They're doing it. Heck yes. They look fat and happy. We talked to Jordan Green, my coach mentor. Definitely encourage you guys to check him out. Fine, baby. Hey, I'm trying to plug somebody here. Farm Builder on YouTube. He has an amazing farm, pig farm up in Virginia. <coughs> I don't know why I turned the camera so you could see her call. He thought, okay, we had a piece of the placenta. placenta. She probably then had sepsis. Pigs are beasts. You don't know they're sick until they're dead. If you do know they're sick, they're sick. She didn't share any signs. She, she was talking about it yesterday. And furthermore, I got a debilitating back injury. Justin had extreme pain. So the other nights we were able to still use the house down there. You're still able to use our bathtub, but they've gotten far enough into the demo that it's not usable any longer. I realized that he needs to take a bath. So we're gonna rig up a hot tub with our um, trough, the one that we take the ice baths in, and also with um, the pig scalding setup. I really feel like 
an uh, Epsom salt bath is gonna be the key to him not freaking out. Like he was like so much in pain. Like I've never seen it. Clean. I have it set up here so he can step into it. Should be good. We have done it. All the kids and I have gotten this together for Justin so that he can have a redneck hot tub. Accelerate healing and feel better in the long run. We have a hundred, do a hundred gallon barrel up there with a fire underneath it. Then siphon it down here into the stock tank. We have our 10 by 10 tent over it to keep the cold rain out of it. Jonah has nicely put out a bath mat. That is it, now we just wait for our water to heat. When we fill up the hot tub, we're gonna go ahead and fill up the barrel again so we can have another soak this evening. Is it terrible? Oh wow. Are you okay? It's so hot. It's so hot. This is wood fire. <laughs> I know, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> We have made it 20 minutes. It's so hot. The question is, can I, I walk? I know, how are you doing? I feel like that's nature's pain medicine. This was the one thing that we didn't have last night. How is it? Still in pain, but that doesn't, that helps. What do you think? Yeah. It's hot, it's hot. Are you gonna be able to do it? I think so. I think it feels really good. You gonna do it for 20 minutes? Probably. I'm gonna do it for longer. I've been off chores three days. Thank God for these kids. I think I'm well enough to at least get on Sally and just check up on things. Jonah's complaining of shoulder pain. I want to say this about the farm. It's the life of us and it's the death of us. Maybe not the death, the pain of us. Well, because it's killing me. It's killing me. It was on the farm I got injured. Uh, oh, you don't think so? Well, yes, I do think that, but I also think that you didn't slow down when your body said slow down. You didn't have to move furniture, demo, or... Actually, I think it was the training that, the workout that actually exasperated the most. And that's the life and the death of me, perhaps. My rabbit died. Did it. I don't know how. There was an expensive water, it worked. And she had to Alright, well it happens. She ate yesterday, she was just fine yesterday. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Lily's little rabbit project has come to an official end. She had a good run. Two years. And then, if that wasn't enough, we got bad news about Jonah's hip. This is a normal hip, right here. You recognize that? This is Jonah's hip. No femoral head. It's completely, utterly collapsed. Good hip, bad hip. I took Jonah on April 17th to his checkup with his surgeon and she ended up just referring us out to a doctor in Charlotte and said we'd be getting a phone call but uh, and, and we requested records yes we requested we, we all got, the medical we got records. photos immediately we got the images and we requested records I am sad because I feel like maybe we could have if we would have known that this was happening so much yeah like I mean no. 2020 is always very hindsight you know like you can always see everything yeah. um, there are ways to get blood flow going to things like this before they die right yeah but how would I have known about any of this you know what I mean like it makes me wonder if they even knew that it was gonna die well, so fast in one of the medical records I was reading it did say that he has AVN or he's going to have AVN, What's AVN? which is avascular necrosis and that's where the ball that's where the femoral of the head. top of the femoral right. head, which is the top of the hip. Well, the femoral or the head top is of the ball. The, oh, okay. It, um, well, so we learned on Friday that he lost the blood supply from the top and from the bottom. Yeah. Because of the... And you can be okay with losing the one from the top. It actually happens over time anyway. Correct. But the bottom one, there's no chance. Yeah. Since that's bone on bone, there's really nothing he's gonna be able to do about that gate until we figure something out. Does it hurt to walk? Sometimes. Does it hurt right now? Not really. Does it hurt to stand? Sometimes, but if I 
across my leg like that. It's more comfortable because okay. it takes the bone pressure off. Yeah. Show me what's happened. So I don't this, think this, that's not the femoral this is, head. This is the femoral head. Half of it, right? Yeah, no, that's the whole bit. thing. I mean, I don't know if that's supposed to be out of it. Mm. But this is so he. This Where's the growth plate on this thing? Well, it's not. Say, it's probably an it's adult. It's probably an adult. But the growth plate, say here, what's only the top that's gone? So it's like, right, it's, yeah. it's collapsed. We knew right away, didn't we? She's, she's a straight shooter. Yeah. She's not. Appreciate snake, that. Snake oil salesman. Yeah. She just said, yeah, you're going to have gonna a total hip replacement. Straight out, total hip replacement. Which, you know, I think it's. I think and that's coming from a non surgical Yeah. Well, and <laughs> our chiropractor knows her and said that she'll either say you either need to have the surgery or she can help you. Yeah. You know. Is this where we're meeting? No. We're going to the appointment. We're going to their office. <laughs> we just got a minute into the waiting room. Right on time. These records in. Mom didn't think you would ever change his shoes again. I know. So. Here I am. What do you hope they say? I don't know. I don't know what I want. I want him. Scheduled him for two weeks. I want him to be restored. That's what I want. But I don't know what that looks like. You want his youth back? Yeah, I want him to be able to run and jump and play and swim and squat and do things that normal 15-year-olds do. I gotta get this on record. What did you just say? I can't wait to milk him comfortably. Oh. Okay, we have it on record, folks. I saw the doc. She can't, she can't help us. Well, she does have an option uh, called fusion. She did say she could do a fusion, but she wouldn't necessarily recommend it. She wants us to talk to the joint replacement doctor. Total hip replacement That's doctor. That's all he does. That's all he does. He's really good at it. He's not pediatric, he's adult, and um... If we fusioned him... He will not have range of motion, won't have but he will not range have... motion, but no pain. You didn't like the fusion option? Why not? I just got checked in with the nurse. You may see two doctors before you see the main doctor? Maybe. Did I hear that right? Yes, there's yeah. other doctors that may come in before. You're getting all the love today. It's <laughs> not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? To be healed. Just a new hip. First doctor's about to come in. If we look at this side, because of all the surgery and right. the collapse, he doesn't have any more proximal femur right. growth plate. And this is effectively closed. Gone. Yeah, like there's, there's no gap there. No. And like for this part, it's, I mean, it's fused right here. So maybe yeah. he could have a little bit of growth here. And then we wouldn't like the implant, we would cut and then put down here. So if he had any more growth right here, like it, it wouldn't, wouldn't mess it up. No. Okay. That was Jonah's x-ray. Um, now she's going to show us digitally what a hip replacement looks like. Is that, is that going to be bigger? That part that connects to my leg? And yeah. So look over here. here. Yeah. It's oh, kind of, it'll really kind of be okay. like that. It's like if it's that little left, that's, that's like, how I may have been that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it has a real right now. Yeah, 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 it has a real <laughs> What do you guys think? Um, cut, getting cut makes me nervous because... Well, yeah, so she talks about doing life to make, cut me. that he needs to make sure that if he gets cut anywhere, he needs to keep it clean and not allow bacteria to like... That's the big risk. Yeah. He can go to the hip and then create an issue. So that's something I think we're just gonna... And he'll probably wear it out, not outgrow it by the time he's 40-ish. Yeah, yeah. but she was talking about they have good materials, and so I'm like, all right, I feel really confident about it. I feel like... You cannot distance run, she said. How do you feel about that? Were you ever gonna run a marathon? Well, That's a good excuse to not ever have to do that. She said I could do it and just wear it out, which I want to run a, uh, half, a, a half Ironman or whatever it is. She said you could have fun sports. She said you could have fun, like soccer, but not competitive. So what's your reaction to that, guys? Well, I mean, I just, I think my biggest concern is like infection. Oh yeah, she said. Well, the the danger is you getting an infection any kind. Yeah. So is it the end of the world to wear chaps? No, I like chaps. Well, no, I, I feel a lot better after seeing the doctor. Yeah. Good. Like fears, He's gonna be able to help you. What were your fears? Well, I guess muscle atrophy. I wasn't even yeah. worried about infection. 
which is what I guess I should be worried about. <laughs> Long story short, he's gonna have to have a total hip replacement. And we've been waiting on the call to schedule. And it looks like that's happening right now. It said, it might have been a couple of weeks ago that this was gonna be eight weeks. So I guess we're, I guess they're right on because we're like five weeks out. Okay, and I will so also send we're just that short for eight weeks. Number. He will be excited to be able to walk normally again. They say he won't be able, he won't have to have another shirt because he's young. He's growing. He's gonna wear it out. Twenty to thirty years. Was that what I thought it was? July seventh. July seventh. And she said if we couldn't do July seventh, it was gonna be. Oh, we're August, making it happen. Late August. No, no. Like, no, we can make it happen. We can still have summer. We can still have summer. I know. August. You'll get August. August, September. We'll September's to warm camping. too. We'll be able to go camping. And then uh, October camping. How are you feeling? I'm very nervous now because now I have to. Yeah. Still, despite all these setbacks, we continued. And I, I wish I could tell you it was out of some heroic act, but it, it comes from more of a place at this point of we have to. There's no other option since we are doing this for our health and you can simply not buy this quality of food. We have to do this, rain or shine. These guys are overdue. And then these guys are overdue. This look all ratty patty in here, man. They need to get to the pasture. They are overdue a move and they're running out of room in that brooder and getting sort of nasty. We've got to get them out before people get sick. Or fail to thrive. Good boy. You driving a steak? Keep going. Keep, Keep going. going. Oh, I wouldn't hold it while you do that. Henry, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't hold it either. Why, Henry? Henry, no! <laughs> Ken, what if you miss and hit your pants? <laughs> There you go. Nice. Uh oh, yeah. he's bending over. Let him do the end. You spread it, okay? So, two troughs holds one full bucket. Hey, best day of your life, birds. Gotta get the T-birds out. Well, thanks, Henry, for putting shavings right there. Hey, he's doing something. Who cares? As long as he's doing something, even if it's wrong, that's what counts. Hopefully the turkeys aren't too big for this. <laughs> what are you doing with that? We're going to Let's take it to the metal stall. Shut it down. Look who came to help. Although, I don't know how much help she'll be because he wants me as soon as you him. come out, he's nuts for you. Man, hey, look man. at this clover and alfalfa. Whoa. Let's put the turkeys out, Henry. Are those because of alfalfa? No, it's just, we have alfalfa planted in there. I was wanting to put them out right here, but now I'm thinking, we really need, hold on, no, no, I wasn't gonna do it yet, shut it. I'm thinking we need to get them some water and some feed right there, buddy. Actually, stand there. Nine, ten. There's a lot more at the. Oh, really? Birder. Okay. Cross our fingers that they stay. Oh, look, they're eating that. They like the alfalfa, but I figured the tall grass will help them be protected from aerial predators. They're still kind of little. Certainly not going to get got by a crow. Probably not by a hawk. It's going to start tube man. They have enough chicken sense to run away from tube man. Get in, get in, let it fly. We've been losing about 15% in the field. I'm kind of wondering if two man is gonna help prevent that. Look how they've already mashed the grass down. That's the sea monsters, what's going on? We also need to check the T-birds to see if they're still in. What's going on? They're out and about, I think I'll leave them on for an owl. You watch over them, guy. Watch over them. Sea monsters seem to be okay. I'll be a little stressed. Let's see what's going on with the turkeys. Everybody's here. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes! And everybody's perched on the turkey shawl. Turkeys don't need walls. They don't need a solid roof. They don't mind the rain. Make sure it's hitting good. It'll keep predators from coming into the side. 
The roof keeps air predators away. The net keeps land predators away. We have this pond. A little janky right now, but could be absolutely incredible. Burn the brush, make a beach, smooth out the side, fix the drain pipe, have an overflow, clean up where the silt went, plant some raspberries, build a dock, install gravity fed drinking water from our spring higher up above. Get a water slide. Get a water slide, we got a vision. We're gonna turn this janky pond into a farmer's paradise. First, drainage pipe. Unfortunately, that pipe busted. It's draining through the crack at the bottom, and I'm not sure we can fix that. I think we have to just get a whole new single wall and dig our whole area. I have to dig back like six feet. But hold on, let me let me cut that off first and drain it some more. Yeah, and, and water's coming through it. Yeah, let's just drain it real good. Let's see where we've drained, strained down like a foot already. I'm thinking if we cut this, we can, he, we can free up the mini axe and he can start digging. Gotta let it drain a little bit or it's gonna be too wet and soft. There we go. Get the stick out. That's good. You'll get the tractor toy when you dump it out, I guess. No, don't dam that up yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Keep letting it drain. I feel like we need to get the area to where we can get in there and cut it and put our joint on. Yeah, just dig out and nut. Dig all the way to the edge. Dig from here all the way up to the edge so that we can replace the pipe. And then we'll have a dam. We're damming it up right there. Are you all ready for this? We're gonna have to move fast. We're gonna have to dam it up. Cut the pipe. Yes, I have zip ties for it. Once we dam it up, we have only so much time to cut it and replace it. Do we got our pipe over here? I think we're successful. At first, I thought I was gonna have to replace that whole line, which would've cost about $2,000. So we just saved ourselves mucho dinero. It's gonna cost 2,000. Wow. The new, new line. And that's not even counting digging up the trench. Right here, there's clay right here. Do that clay on it first, on the joint. The baby driving? He does? That's probably good. Tie it to the end and then we'll lift that pipe up. Oh, there you're getting it. You know how to swim. I do. It's just a little. Is water chilly. going through that, Jonah? Yeah. Sorry. If I That's good. In the eye. No, no, water. Have you guys tested it to see if it's at that. the end? I don't believe water's going through that. I have no idea. Don't ask me. I'd say that's good. Ah! Oh. That'll get it spread, guys. Let's do it. Every kid likes this job. We're about to seed this pasture. It's good, it's rained a little bit. The seeds will take. Here, we ended up leaning this against the bank. It's just what it wanted to do. I don't think it'll hurt. Maybe the water starts draining there. It might start tearing away at the bank, but we'll see. I hesitate to cut it, because if you cut it too much, there's no adding. Problem is, we have one inch leftover pipe. I guess it just got buried in the silt. How are we gonna get it out? Straps were not staying on. I got these, I don't know. Tool hangers, see if we can't screw in there and have something to grip to. I need a drill for pilot holes, guys. Pretty jerry, but it works. Hopefully it's all one piece, looks like it is. Drill holes all up in the bottom and all up in the sides. We're gonna share straight up chicken guts. So is that weird to feed chicken chicken guts? You can do it. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's weird. Weird because it's chicken eating chicken. Here's some with the piglets. I don't want to fill the bucket this much. You spoiled. We're used to their ice cream all the time. Guts in there. So, yeah. 
Yeah, look at the juice coming out. Yeah, chicken gut juice. So you could do, do this with guts. You could do this with roadkill. Nick has done this with squirrels. Lots of squirrels. Why'd you do it with squirrels for chickens? Because there's so many maggots. squirrels at the farm. I probably killed 200 squirrels, and there's like mm. hasn't made a dent. Has to be during the growing season. Has to be when you have flies. Because what's gonna happen is the flies are gonna go in there, lay their maggots. We got holes big enough for flies. Oh, you're talking to me? Yeah. To get in there They're later. Good. Flies get into everything. We want the flies to be able to get in. I think. And the lid. A little cracked. Once it's wires up, sure. they'll hold it yeah. down. The last thing we want is to have that in there rotting and stinking, and the flies can't get in there to lay their larva. We've just rigged up a T-post. Past have done sort of a frame TP, like three prongs of sticks. But I feel like a T-post works just fine. Flies there will go. go in there, they'll lay their larva, the larva turns into maggot, they'll follow the light to get out. And we'll have a bare spot here because the chickens will quickly figure it out. We forgot wood chips. Hope, in the wood hope you're right, Nick. And the wood chips absorb the it smell does. a little bit. Yeah, because when there's so much moisture in there, a lot of times the maggots will drown. So mm. this adds surface area for them to climb on. Oh, nice. Day two maggot dispenser. It is raining. So imagine that's affecting our fly population. We do have one fly there. Some flies in there. That's good. And they're laying their larva. You see maggots. Oh, baby maggots. Baby maggots. Mucho. They'll start searching out this light as they get bigger. And they'll come falling out. Maggots are on top of the guts up here. Are they really going to crawl down? I feel like they're going to want to crawl up. Flies are probably 100% getting through the top. These holes could be bigger. Keeping the rain out. Bigger holes. Bigger flies. Later in the day. Look at all the fly activity. I don't know if they're after the flies or if maggots are actually falling. You can see all the maggots. <laughs> see those things coming out? They're all just moving. Papa, the problem is it's too high for them. They're getting something. <gasps> they're getting maggots. There's maggots on the side of the bucket. Maggots are just pouring out. Ooh, I need to lower this down. See them? They're just swarming out. Now they'll be swarming around it. Look at that. Stink. They're just falling out by the chunks. And these chickens are having a heyday. But my theory was wrong. The maggots are having no problem getting out the lower end. And while the farm was cranking, we got the remodel going. The horse loggers are here scouting. We're looking for maple har hardwood floors and locust decking. Can you imagine locust decking? That's gonna be a beast. We will definitely take this one and we can feel good about it because we know it's not gonna get any better. It's just that. gonna fall down. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And all we need is one horse. He's strong enough to pull them big trees Yeah, because we're going mostly downhill. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we're not gonna use, because we're pulling flooring, we're not pulling big timbers like we talked uh -huh. about doing in the beginning with the big pine. Yeah. So we can use a single horse to pull short logs down a short okay. distance to, to the skid steer. He just said, he just said back and Copper comes out. Good We're lord. More hard. <laughs> I told you, he'd make uh, Captain, your riding horse, look like a little horse. Yeah. Look like a pony. Lily, grab a brush. He, he said you could help her. Did you learn how to approach him like that, Lily? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She knows he's going to be a little nervous. Of He's going to pick his hoofs next. Make sure there's no rocks. So see these raised things here? Mm -hmm. That's called uh, Boreum. Okay. Another trade name is Drill Tech, but that gives them a little extra traction. Oh, yeah. nice. I have to ask them to pull a heavy load. A little spot right here, you can get some rocks lodged in there, which will give you some problems. This is what they did before tractors. You didn't just come out here and turn a key. Now, the good thing about this horse over a tractor is. It's fuels right here. Probably takes a lot of fuel, doesn't it? Yeah. Called a trace. And this is what we're gonna hook to the chain, which mm. then hooks to a single tree, which then hooks to whatever you're pulling. Got a blinder, huh? Are these how you're driving him? Yeah, this is how I communicate ah. left, right, wow. go, stop. Look at this.
you holding up, copper? Three logs down. Three logs down, yep. But Are you able to keep up with the horse? Oh, yeah. No way we'd get the track loader up in here. The horse has the advantage because it can go in narrow spots. It's a huge log. <laughs> Horse pulls it like it's nothing. And give Copper a little break while they work up a tree. Is that dog what a good hitching post post for you? Yeah. Lily, you want to take water down to the horse? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lily, you're gonna have a friend. She said that's how you make a friend with a horse. Give him a snack. He figures it out even with the bridle on, huh? Yeah, they, they're pretty smart. Are you afraid it's gonna, he's gonna bite you? There you go. The construction crew is here. 6.30 in the morning they showed up. We gotta take off the roof to the holler house to bring it up to code. And that starts today. While we're at it, we might as well raise it two feet and get more light into the house through bigger windows. Very slippery. Look at this. You must have the the, you must have the skylight. The skylight's gone. I stick down because this roof is gonna go, and we are in a temperate rainforest. The guys have the Henry cart up on the roof. That'll do it. On from one end to the next. Looking good. Oh my gosh. The house is gonna be completely exposed after today. They're right above us. You got the light in here now, Beck. <laughs> it is completely gutted. Just a small. Weird to be in our house looking up at the sky. Porch is half gone too. And this house is gonna be off the charts. No roof. Our roof is gone. Go see him. Go see mama, mama's coming. They're gonna drop this top frame. They're about to drop this top frame. No. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, while things were on the up and up, another hiccup. Okay, she just kicked me good. She kicked me in the nose. My freaking nose is broken. Is that swelling or is that a bone? If that wasn't a reminder why you're leaving, I don't know what is. I got kicked in the face. And all that's going on, I may be going to the hospital to get my nose freaking straightened out. That could have been my teeth. That could have been my jaw that I just had worked on. It could have been my other teeth. I could have just got my teeth busted out. Okay, can you take the chores from here? Yeah. Before I go to mom. I kind of feel like it's maybe crooked right there. It doesn't hurt like crazy. Wouldn't it hurt like crazy if I broke my nose? Uh, I think Flossie broke my nose. <gasps> She kicked me in the face. Oh my God. 
doesn't it look like it this does. is going this oh way and it should be over there? Look at it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> this just today keeps getting sore. I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm gonna vomit. What does it say? I just feel like I'm gonna vomit because I can't look at you. Just so glad this wasn't the kids. It's gonna be some expensive milk. It'd certainly be a day where I would wonder, why are we doing this? But I don't ask that because we can't get uh, raw milk where we are. We want it, we gotta want it. We gotta get our nose broken every once in a while. Well, pretty good. I've been milking for 10-ish years. Haven't broken anything yet. Okay, thanks. What are you today? Well, bro broke my nose. How'd you do that? My, a cow kicked me when I was milking. A cow? When did that happen? You don't get too many of those, do you? No. <laughs> they will call you for the x-ray shortly, okay. okay? Thank you. We're gonna stop in there. I'm waiting on the x-ray. I'm about to look at it. <laughs> they called me back to the cat scan. Now I guess we're just gonna wait on the doctor. Right, so I got the x-ray back. Yeah. There is a fracture to okay. the nose bone, but it's not something that we would reduce in the emergency room. Okay. I know there's all those movies <laughs> where the doc comes in yeah, and that's... like clicks it back in place. Typically the body, once the swelling goes down, the nose bones oh. will go back to where they need to go. Okay. Yeah. But. Sometimes it doesn't happen right away, and sometimes it does need evaluation by an ear, nose, and throat doctor. But they don't even want to see you until okay. the swelling goes down in a week's time. Okay. Well, that's kind of unbelievable, isn't it? I gotta walk around with a crooked nose. But it kind of makes sense. You gotta wait till the swelling gets down so they can see it. Hopefully you still love me. You gotta look at this. No, I don't know if I can look at it just because it looks so awful. It looks so... Here you go, but, but it is an ear, nose, and throat doctor. I go to. You know, it's a big mistake. You know, she had been a moment without being milked. She got filled up on that alfalfa. Mm. Uh, she wasn't hungry for it. She was done. Oh, why? Because when Jostar went to milk her, she had... Yeah, he had given her all the alfalfa. Oh, okay. And then here I come. It would have been a big pain to get the stanchion up there. Really, I should have just... I bet... You just, you know, it was weird as she didn't cook me right away. Like, normally it's kicking on the onset, not after I've been milking a while. Hindsight's 2020, I should have just let her have her calf, but you just don't know. But then things started to look better for us. All right, the cheeks to the sheets. <laughs> nice hair. He does. I hate this. I, I know, I know, honey. Pinch, pinch, pinch. So this is the lidocaine, little pinch, bit of bee sting. Pinch, 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 bee sting, bee sting, bee sting. I'm sorry, that's the worst of it. Rub it, rub it, rub it. That's why I. What is that doing? Lidocaine, it's numbing it that's up. That's the numbing. Oh, why? I can feel that in my hand already. <laughs> this is the beginning of you walking and running and swimming and hiking and riding your bike and all the fun things that you haven't been able to do. So when you get scared, just remember that. This is the beginning of that. I just want to let you know that we just got surgery with Jonah a few minutes ago. Okay, great. Mm. Thank you so much. Oh, snap. You did it in less than an hour? No, no, it just started. Oh, just started? Yes. Oh my gosh. There's just a lot of prep. It's not like you take him back. What happened? I just got a text saying that procedure is progressing. It's been an hour since they started. It feels different. That's good. It's the most painful one. Yeah. Did that medicine help you at all? Sort of. You can tell you can already move it. You barely moved it. You couldn't do that before. You couldn't do that right there. Tylenol's kicking in. Why were you in pain? Yeah, he Those muscles and stuff still work. Oh, yeah. It was major. Well, I mean, you got a whole new total hip. So bring it all the way up and hold. And then lower it down. Feel how it's really working your quads there. Is that a new movement for you, Jonah? No, he's done that one before. But he's done all these? He did them in PT the first time. But just let it 
It's the next day, officially day one. They count surgery day as day zero. <laughs> well, you're still with us. <laughs> Alive. Well, I don't know. Are you well? <laughs> He's hurting pretty What's wrong bad. With him? His leg. His, his, the whole leg hurts. Yeah. I mean, obviously they replaced a joint. You didn't even sleep too well last night. Need some pain medicine two hours before it was due. Last night, what was the pain level? Zero to ten. Six, seven. Whoa. They want it to be like under four. Guys, take the front of this deep bedding system off, okay? Yep. So that we can get in there. Then Josiah's gonna get in there with the mini X and stir this up. Give me one huge pile, Josiah. Then we're gonna put fence up along this and we'll be able to bring the the Chickshaw Mini Me here or the Chickshaw 5.0 and we're gonna put chickens on make, helping us make this compost, okay? So y'all's job this morning is to get the side off. <music> gonna flip the compost oh my gosh <laughs> that's six and a half feet tall that's a six and a half feet tall compost I think that'll get warm is it warm we need to wet it down water it until you think you've just absolutely drowned it and can't take no more water and then double that hopefully it didn't already sort of ignite when the sheep were on it and we can get this ignited it's got sheep manure it's mostly spent hay there's some wood chips and there's pig manure in there. No, 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 okay, that's lower. Put it, if you're gonna just leave it, put it up high. We're gonna put a net on top of this. We'll have to, because you're right, they're gonna jump up on that and jump out. Say goodbye to this ruggedly handsome crooked nose. <laughs> I'll be glad when it's back straight. Hopefully they can get it straight. I think they will. Hopefully it doesn't hurt too bad when I wake up. Uh, that's my big concern. Damn, you sound pretty good. Did they already give me that? Yeah, yeah. they did. They oh, okay. Did. <laughs> they said I wouldn't be worried about that. <laughs> All right. Just visit with the anesthesiologist. This is probably it. Next time you'll see me, I'll probably be more like, we'll see. Do you want something? No. No? Okay. So do be careful, because if you knock it, it's going to come on a pop back out of place. Oh, gosh. Yes, be careful. He was like rough no rough the other day, yeah. and I was like, "Stop!" Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to get a hit, you don't headbutt it or anything. This is a very small bed. <laughs> it's a little small. It's not too bad. No, they did it. It's just right here. <laughs> that lady said she liked it. I didn't know she was gonna take it. Think I'm in my new look. Think about the flat cat. fast we are already going home it's a straight I don't think I'm gonna be so dizzy and tired all right release the chickens nothing all come out oh that one came out his eyes We've got some already pecking at the pile. This is so exciting because chickens naturally just scratch and peck all day and they'll help turn this compost pile. They'll probably knock three feet off the top of this in a week. Rooster's king of the mountain. Just jump right to it. As if you've been working compost your whole life. Who wants to catch this chicken and beefcake pen? The two guests go for it. There you go, John got it. There you go. That one's still trying to get with the pig. They're adding their nutrients though. Look at that, little chicken turd. Look who had her baby. It looked like she just had it. You wanna come see the baby? Could it be we have our seventh steer on the farm? Oh, maybe it's a fee. Maybe it's a little heifer. Two cows in milk now. One cow means milk every day for the children. Yogurt a little bit. Cream a little bit, two cows in milk, yogurt and cream all the time as well, plus some butter. She just had it. She's eating her placenta right now. It's a heifer. Wow, call the inquirer. We finally had a female on the farm. We're real close to nursing. I think it's gotten one. We went to nurse within the first hour to get that colostrum. Very nice potato. Look at that potato. That's a big one. We win, man. That'll cheer her up. What is our compost up to? Oh, 110. Wake up, sleepyhead. 
Driver's ed today. I have to do review. You're driving on the road today. Good luck. All right. He's driving. We're gonna be those parents. Stalk him for a few minutes. You driving? Yeah, look, he's gonna pass somebody. No, it's <laughs> his first pass. Go faster. Pass him. I'm trying. Now yell out right. the window. Now we're gonna be those dorks. I wonder if that guy has a brake on his side. My driver's saw, ed teacher did. It. That's me. So that's my brake, right? Yes. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Uh -huh. I have my own brake. <laughs> this is really fun. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> this is his first. Stop sign. He's losing me. He lost me. <laughs> he says, see you later, Mom. That's he must think we're helicopter parents. Because he doesn't know. There he is. Oh, he's turning around. How'd you do, bud? Yeah. Save our students' reaction. It's easier than I thought. Yeah. Is it? But don't get overconfident. Yeah, don't get overconfident. Don't get I like overconfident. that. Hey, he done good. Okay, so how was it really? It was good. Actually, it was good. How was it really? Did you go on this four-way highway right here? Yes. Any, any scary moments? Learn anything that surprised you? No. Can you give me the ladder so I can get up there? Yeah. You want to be the first to get up in the attic? Yeah. That is button in line back. I know. He won't even let you go up there. You can put toe weight on that. I don't know how many times I'm going to tell him that. Whatever you can put on your toe, bro. This oh, is it too low? Look, my head goes past the rafter right here. Well, do you need to stay in up there? If we're sleeping here, yes. Why do you need to? <laughs> Why do you need to stand if you're sleeping? I want a box that goes like this. Why? So when we go up the ladder, we can walk in. Oh. These won't be taken out, but it'll go to here. You guys will just have beds down here. This is plenty of room to crawl up here. I mean, you can stand down here and twirl around. Do you want to do twirling? Go down there. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Okay, okay. This is just laying down. Is this the last day? Hopefully. Ten months you haven't been able to walk normally. Yeah, pretty much. Is today the day? I hope so. I feel confident that they're gonna tell us that you can walk and everything's going good. I hope. I hope, I hope so too. You've had a hard time walking in the last year. I have. So we're looking forward to it. We've got plans to go camping. We we planned this camping trip in good faith that we were going to be ready to go taller than you were last time. Yeah, I was gonna ask you what was his height. Five four, and now you're like a quarter inch taller. I think you're waiting. What'd you just say to me? I'm nervous that they're not gonna let us walk. You ready to be done with those crutches? Yes. Okay, we can be done with those. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be done. Everything looks great with your x-ray. I had Dr. Masana take a look as well, and everything is healing perfectly. Okay. Yep, this is titanium metal going down into the femur there. It's really short, okay. it's only about this big. Titanium metal cup there, screw for fixation, mm -hmm. and then this ball there is made of a ceramic material. No restrictions for you, so kind of doing whatever feels good, kind of slowly getting back into things. You know, you've been on crutches, so your hip's gonna feel pretty weak for a little while, so just slowly getting back into okay. things. <laughs> is it weird? <laughs> All right, so tell me. I'm very excited. <laughs> All restrictions are off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start walking. Let me do. I know. Well, do you want me to carry your crutches out? No, I'll let the one crutch out. Which one do you want? Okay, I'll take this one. You almost cried because you're so happy. Like when after surgery, so when he had his surgery, he he was able to move his hip right away and then he could tell the difference and he was became emotional because he was just happy. I know, it's good, it's good. We have two month checkup and then one year checkup, so yeah. We never pressed one. <laughs> We're just sitting here. <laughs> We're just sitting here talking about the excitement of your hip. Okay, now we can get out. <laughs> can you rock without the crutch? Look at you, look at you. You can slow down, you're going so fast. Does it feel weird? I think it's just you're getting used to walking again, Jonah. You haven't walked normal in a very long time. Oh, they're back. I decided I should be on crutches for What? <laughs> you still going on it? No. Oh! <laughs> Hugs. You did it. It feels weird, huh? Yeah, it does. You're walking funny. It does. You're gonna have to learn how to use that leg again. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, Jonah's getting his permit. <laughs> that means he could be driving mom 
this afternoon. You think Jen will get his permit? Rebecca and I were talking about it this morning. We're so glad we had so many kids because Jonah and Josiah, like, if, they, if that, that was all we had, they're just like, it's over. But we still got cuddlebutt, even though you don't sleep great. Think you're gonna pass? I hope so. Mr. 94? Yep. Been taking his practice test. Been doing good. Hopefully it won't take forever. And we're gonna take the kids indoor rock climbing. How you feeling, you nervous? I'm worried that I'm not gonna pass. And if you don't pass, you only have 30 days from the first test, and you can only take it once a week. We're here waiting at the office, the first office we went to, over two hours. This one, less than 10 minutes. So, I passed. He passed! You're driving away. Here you go, buddy. It's exciting stuff. So easy. I only did skip one, which you can skip one or a few. I feel very confident that you know how to drive. Mama just text. I think I read this right. He passed. Jonah passed. Jonah's got a driver's permit. I am super excited to see Jonah. Oh, we got to hug his little neck. My boy is growing up. And we're going to take all the kids rock climbing. You got some diapers and wipes in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I Everybody packed got it town myself. shoes? Yep. Mr. Brown, you got your shoes? Yep. What about you with your yogurt mustache? You got shoes? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot you. <laughs> Five minutes down the road. We got all the kids. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Henry's shoes. Thanks. We got all the shoes. Congratulations, man. Uh -huh. Did you drive over here? He did. How do you do? Great. Except you like the key in the car. Other than that, <laughs> you did really good. The first thing I'd like to tell you guys, well, let me ask, has anyone ever been in a climbing gym before or done any climbing before? You have? Uh -huh. Very cool. Okay, training over. Just how you guys gotta make sure you clip in. Johnny, you going to the top? Look at this boy. He was on crutches just, what, a month ago? Whoa! Hey, why'd you stop? I'm, it's scared to fall from that high. <laughs> I'm, I'm practicing. <laughs> Just, I, he's not scared. Okay. Are you scared? I don't even think he practiced to fall. Did you practice to fall yet? Okay. It's not straight up. It's like I know it this does. way. <laughs> he's, climbing, he's climbing to the top on his first try. Wow. <laughs> How was it? I'm you went all the way at the top. Oh look, they write it. Okay, so which one did you do? The blue, green, or orange? No. Oh, okay. So the idea is if, like say you stay on the green ones, it's a 5.9, whatever that means. Really on the movable climb. It's gotta be hard, right? That looks hard. It is fearless. <laughs> you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Proud of you. You're growing up, man. Yeah, Looking sorry. good up there. Well, you sweat too. Did you get all the shots you wanted? I did. You made a rock climbing movie? Yeah. <laughs> and help you out. <laughs> it's crazy. Just go slow. Reaction time is a lot better when you're going slow. You understand? Mm -hmm. People can just suck it if they if they get upset at you driving slow. Slow down. This guy's gonna be in that lane. <laughs> Run off the curb there a little bit, buddy. Okay, slow down. This is a yield. Bye bye. This guy's doing really good. Been really serious. Take it mile. serious. It's going slow. Go ahead and put your blinker on. Now wait, wait until you can see. You just passed it. All right, keep going. You missed that turn. Mile. It's all right. There we go. How's he doing, Josiah? Good. You scared? A little bit. <laughs> to celebrate his healing and to just take a much needed break, spend some time together as a family. We went on a summer camping trip. First meal at the campsite. He's destroying our campsite chairs. Oh, he thinks fun. he's being important. Because it's hot as heck out there. We need to have the seating area here, this picnic table. We need to move all of this undercover. Where do you want the other tent? And just put the other 12 by 12 going that way. Okay, so right here. And we've got outlets. And we've got running water. Our 12 by 12. And we got an air mattress. No shame. No shame. Are we glamping or camping? It's not this quite is glamping, like, is it? It's not quite glamping, but it's not camping. Pretty close. And the first thing the attendant told us was the Wi Fi. <laughs> Two 10 by 10. Tents coming out under the 10 by 10. Got some friends, mentors coming tonight. They're going to pull up 
It's all gonna just be glamping. We are about to go tubing. Do you think we have enough tubes on the roof? You think we can make it? We're not tying it down. The park is right there. I think we'll drive really slow. Oh wow, that tube's right in the window. Make sure that no tubes fall. We didn't even make it out of the parking lot. Tubes fell off. There we go. Did that work? Yes, I put the life vest in. Hey, watch. Should we pull over the Sure. I can hold one too if you hand it to me. You got a tube, Steve? Yeah, I got one. We made it. No more tube drama. Back on the farm, we continued with the remodel and farm projects. These are our forest trees. That's a maple. That's probably a locust. We got maple and locust planted down here. Future shade. That's your future shade, y'all. I have tightened this up. Probably two two webs. And I think cattle panels are pretty expensive and have to be bought in our town. And we got something like 50. Ch oh my gosh. He's rubbing on it, but he definitely has less interest in going inside of it. Say we get a board right here for the sheet and maybe one up here. We have two by sixes or one by eight sits, it looks like. These are buried under two by fours. So maybe that's why we just get these. The case, so let's try it. 248, 245, that's the way, the 45s that sit inside the 48s. Put on the glasses, right? We're gonna try one sample to see if it works before we go cutting a bunch of boards. He's gonna need 40 boards. He's one and five eighths. Too short. And that might work if we were gonna do the one by sixes, but we decided to do two by fours. We need uh, I don't know, two inches, three inches. Just tightening it up, might have saved it. They haven't gotten to it. There, put a clamp on it too. That board's too wide, I was afraid of that. The board's too long, these, these aren't quite. We don't even have to screw them in. We just have to do another one That's right here. That's true. Because this one's on a hill, we'll have to, I don't know, maybe lift that and screw it that way. But. But this one, oh. we can reinforce it by screwing it to each other. Don't know if we need, absolutely have to screw it though, because look, they're not gonna be able to push it because the T-post is blocking it. Oh man, I'm excited when things turn out like this. I am very happy about that. See, we were in, able to intertwine in between the woven wires. Now we don't have to use U-nails and nail it. I screwed it in for extra security. They're not getting... <laughs> They ain't getting in there now. We just single-handedly saved our maple tree. Do you have any locusts that would be good for decking? Yes. That could save us some money. And we could have decking from the farm. Like, how cool would that be? We go back and forth on whether we're just gonna buy it or harvest it ourselves. Big one. Fall it right there out into the field. And there's one right there. And one right there. There's six or seven. They're thicker, so those are gonna go a little further. This is all kind of for young forest. There's some, that'd be good for like a pole. Hey, there's one, that's easy. Y'all see that? There's a walnut branch right across where it needs to fall. This thing could be worth its weight in gold if it means we don't have to fell a dangerous tree. He's gonna get rid of that little tree there so he can get to it. <laughs> he just pushed it over. He just pushed that little tree over. Hey, maybe he'll be able to push this tree over. It's working. <laughs> He's smiling. He's grinning. I didn't think it would work. And he's like, oh, look, yeah, let's do it. It'll work. Oh, he's digging. He is having to dig a little bit. But hey, you can get in there and dig. You think it'll push it? Yeah. It's not going. Nope. 
Got it three. He's getting it. Three position up higher. It's not doing it. The root system's too much. I didn't want to be right. I wanted this to be easy. Something's breaking. Oh, there it is. Boom. He's smiling. First 10 footer. Not bad. Once we got started, six logs. Six logs in 30 minutes, bro. That's the catch. All this crap. Tear down. Watch, his, watch yourself, the locust. There it goes. It wasn't pulling over. I think it's so entwined with this locust. The locust is actually holding it back because it's still rooted. Good work, bud. Two more logs. We're going good. Twenty-seven ish. He called for twenty-five to thirty. Those would have only been twelve inches. That's all we needed at twenty-five to thirty. Some of these are fifteen inches, sixteen. How wide's the decking? Five and a half inches. I think so. A week or so ago, we harvested all this locust for our decking in our homestead house remodel. Imagine decking will be right. Here. We'll be walking on decking that we harvested ourselves. It'll have a story. Couldn't wait to get in here. This deck too. Apparently, this is a lot of decking. <laughs> My guide on this, Ian. We worked all day, harvested that locust. He said, yeah, it, that's only about half. <laughs> he thought we were done. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a deck too. We're gonna connect these two decks. Although because this deck is normal deck, this probably should be too. But even so, we're looking at 900 square feet of decking. So why are we harvesting our own decking? After all, we've been outsourcing all of our uh, homestead house remodel, really. We're leaving it up to the experts. We're keeping this project moving. We only live in a tiny cabin so long. That. I don't always capture the steepness of this place. It's actually more like that. Isn't that crazy? Okay, it's crazy. Well, we got us a mortgage and we thought what we had was a generous budget. Hey, hey. Lily, you wanna come do vanilla? You do vanilla, I do honey. Dirty done. But first, I'm being totally honest. We're gonna save some money. We could harvest our own decking from the land. And things end up being a lot more expensive than we imagined. A lot. I'm sure nobody's surprised. <laughs> Funny thing is, when the contractor came back with the price of the decking, we're having it installed, no matter what. Locusts or traditional stuff, that's, that's the same price, no matter what. Uh, when he came back with the price of the store-bought and decking, it's like $2,500. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but it was actually the first price that came through and we're like, well, that's kind of, that seems reasonable. <laughs> the install is more than that. First tree. We found a bonus tree. I, I just figured it out about my nerves. Although it's a little different, it's a lot the same. These are the same jitters I had before a track meet, before a soccer game. Ooh, more like before my mountain boarding meets because the mountain boarding meets were dangerous. What I think I have here, guys, is pregame jitters. And so, just like in mountain boarding, that fear, it's there to keep us safe. You think that'll fall close enough? Yeah. Y'all stay up here, you're well out of the way. Off with it. Hopefully it's gonna fall right there. It's close enough for, for this road for us to snag it out. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pull it up. Okay. Then I'll spin around and you can hook it to the back. Hey, it's gonna be a good day. We need 10 foot pieces, lengths, but 10 foot, if we carry it down and it's out horizontal, there's, these trees are too close in. 
that's not gonna work. And we don't wanna take one 10 foot log at a time. So what we're gonna try to do is drag down this whole big old log, cut it into 10 foot lengths down there. Call me, Jonah, if you have any problems. We're gonna go with the next one. I guess I'm going at low hanging fruit at first. We're gonna get that boy right down into the road. And then next, the big guy, the biggest one I've seen. He's also leaning right down into the road. I don't know why the locust tree is a heat, but kids are fine tuning their airsoft course way over there, leaning right down towards the road. That's probably a good angle for you guys, huh? Can we turn our eyes on this giant? So big. I can see the locust trees. I mean, the leaves way up in the sky. I'm excited. It's gonna be a good tree. I'm safe. Everybody's safe. I guess because it's so green. We lost a good bit of it. Big bottom out now. We got the top out. Things couldn't be going better. A lot of the locusts were finding their pioneer species, so they're the first to come up in a forest, and so a lot of them have done their job and they're dead. But this one made it to the light. The big hard other hardwoods begin to shadow them out. How was it pulling that big log? Did it work? Besides for the tight corners. Monster log. What is that, 40 feet, four cuts? As cool as this deck is gonna be, I'm really enjoying this process. I'm having a good time. We're working with chainsaws, a couple of big machines. I'm working with my boys. Henry interacts with us in between. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more coming, that's seven. Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> We just took a break for lunch. We're back at it. We gotta cut these into 10 foot pieces. 10 foot, I called the mill guy and he's like, yeah, it's hard to keep locusts straight, so the shorter the better. You are leaking. We're dripping right here. Hopefully we just need to tighten this up. I guess it just vibrated loose, Jesse. We did it. And we're all in one piece. That's our total log pile. You think this is enough deck? Oh my word. <laughs> Finally, I'm getting to this milk. We are inundated with tons and tons of raw milk. Basically, we're dealing with all the milk goods today, save cheese. The first and the most easiest to consume, of course, is milk. Second would be yogurt. We like to do yogurt before even cooling these guys off because we're gonna have to heat it up to 105. See this naturally developing cream line? We're gonna get it out of here very carefully so as to not disturb it and put it on the table. It's interesting how some of it has more cream line and some of it less. It all just depends on the pasture and probably about how much clover they have. It's a very thin cream line. That's only an inch on a gallon. This is like two inches on a gallon. Twice as much. Almost a third of that half gallon. That was a good day. We go through so much cream for tea, cream for ice cream. We can have it by the half gallon. Got this little ladle. Whoops, should have held it up there so it doesn't spill on it. For years, we used to use a machine cream separator, but it's loud and you have to set it up. You have to clean it up. I don't think it's worth it. We're just scooping cream off the top and just got rid of our cream separate. The quick and easiest way to use this cream is as cream. Put a little bit of in my tea, fruit in my lace. The next easiest process would just be turn some milk into some yogurt. We fridged what we had today because we were processing over there. You can just bring it in from milking, filter it, and then put it on to heat. Uh, we had to fridge it with all we were doing this morning, but now I'm gonna heat this up to 105 or 100. Let's do 100. Why we like making yogurt at home so much is because 
we can make raw yogurt. You cannot buy raw yogurt. We like this. It's uh, Alexandra, 100% grass-fed, A2A2. We do a third of a cup for every half gallon. Normally we do about two gallons. I think it's for getting. Stir in the yogurt. Stainless steel filter. A couple half gallon jars. Normally this is more full because we're doing like two gallons at a time. Normally you could do a ladle if this is really full, but I think we got this. Oh yeah. We do have a dehydrator, so I'm using that. I can set it at 105. I'm going 24 hours. I don't think I need to walk three miles today. No, I got these young feet too. We got the young camera guy. You got to train because you're going to do this on your own farm. We're springing the seed all the way up to the grass line. It's covering this whole bank here. I don't think we would have been able to drive that on there with the driving seeder anyway. There's no way to get the compost on this bank. That's where the hay is going to come in as a mulch. We're going to use the bedding right here in the middle of the road. Josiah's gonna load us up, and he's gonna put the hay forks on and get the hay up the mountain. We are using hay as mulch. We do not use straw because straw has been sprayed with glyphosate. We don't want that on our pasture. We do, however, have a source of unsprayed hay. This deep bedding material seems to be working out perfect. Looking at so many bales to do this. Question is, is one on strip road? enough yeah. to do it on both sides? This will warm you up, Austin. <laughs> Come and get in. Okay, so I just throw it around like that. guys y'all are keeping up with the mini at, or the track loader they're spreading so fast now the track loader can't even keep up all right we got a big swath here though don't we yep. huge probably 50 feet wide yeah take it down through there You guys might be wondering why we're doing this. Well, we're on a 35 degree slope up there. It's not quite that steep here. And we need to graze out here and we need to get our machines out here to be able to pull the milk sled and things like that. Access, we're gonna put water and electric connections along these things eventually. There'll be a water connection within 100 feet everywhere on this farm eventually. And these roads will enable that. So in the long run, this is going to be totally worth it. So I will start at the far end to start stacking them. He's going to unload it. We're going to stack it. That's the paint with the little bell. That's what we get for something we can handle. Oh, okay, well. Lessons? Yeah. Ooh, how convenient. One of the coolest things about square bells is the kids can manage it, but it's work together. 158 hay bells right there. We've got this bay. We've got the bay right behind me. We want to get a thousand bells in here. That's what we need, a thousand bells. Uh-oh, now we have John. John, how'd you get off school so early to come back? I did most of it quickly. Heck yeah, look at the stairs. Dude, your hay hearts, hearts work? Yeah. Is it easier mm -hmm. than grabbing so. the strings? You all right, John? Dangerous. 
I couldn't be any happier right now. <laughs> working hard. Seeing these kids working hard, working hard together. That beats any roller coaster on a vacation. 310 bells. Lily's picking these up. He made these ones quite a bit lighter. Even Gideon and Lily can handle them. Our first ever hay wagon and truckload of hay for this next generation. Wonder how many we'll have. Go to water now. That's 11. That's 12. 12 in the back of the truck. Oh boy. We're running into a problem. It's good that these are lighter. They're crushing when we're stepping on them. I think there's like 500 done like this, so we're gonna make the best of it. All right, it's a race to beat them before they get here. Now we got a crew. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> 16 people. I can't lift, I, it's like sure. falling apart. We don't want this to be on the bottom of the pile. Chicken's the most broken stuff. One of two more loads coming. He backs out like he's driving forward. We've gotten a little loose in our stack job, but I think we'll get this trailer and dump truck in it. We've stacked the pole barn. We gotta put it in Hollywood now. Kids are saying this is gonna be the one with their fork. But you know how to stack it? You don't stack it tight. Yeah. You know, so that you can have room at each level. Yeah, people wanna stack it tight. Pushing hay bales close to each other, and then you get one that's longer and it starts to sag. See, tight spot, tight. Up top, we are talking about one of three of our heat sources. Okay, so we're talking about a wood stove, but then he offered, mm. will you show him that picture? Of like a fire, more fireplacey. It's an insert. Okay. Does it, it doesn't, it's does a wood it stove that's built into the wall. Does You'd it be the stove man. Yeah. It, okay. it does for the blowers, okay. but okay. it doesn't have to. It have doesn't that. have to have no, the blowers. Yeah. It's all got radiant glass too. Okay. So. When it comes to heat, we really want our redundancy. I live in Deep Gap, and I've got my furnace runs off pellets, so I got a pellet stove, uh, pellet furnace, mm -hmm. and that's how I heat my my house. I've got a pellet stove downstairs that heats the basement. I've got a gas fireplace on the other end of the basement. I got a wood stove upstairs. Of course, it's probably because I'm in this business and I have been for 20 something right. years, but I, the, the thing I like about it is I'm not, I'm not dependent on the gas company to get to me. Right. I'm not dependent on the wood pellets to get to me and I'm not dependent on me to split firewood. I've got a way to heat my home no another way. I agree with Scott. It's a good idea to not be completely dependent on one of those things. Even splitting your own firewood. Something could happen to you physically and you not be able to do it. This garage turns out to be much too small. We can get in just barely on either side. We can also just barely clear my truck by only three inches. Big problem. It's not long enough. About 22.6 is what you're gonna finish inside. Okay. Yeah. Is All that right. enough? If you were to park in here right now, the hitch would stick out about, I don't know, a few inches. How much more is that than what we have? It's almost three feet. Almost it's not yeah, quite. You only needed, what, six inches? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is your truck. And then you'll have some room to walk around. Well, and the yeah. thing is she won't have to pull it All up the way. to. That's putting her bumper right here. Driver's side right here, she can get out and easily go into the bottom. But what if she has to get something out of the passenger side? Or what if we're all? all with her, or somebody's with her, which is very likely. If the kids are with her, they'll be able to get out and walk around the front. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beauty, probably second to her kitchen, really wants a garage. We've had this, we've been living here for 22 years, ever since we got married, it might be 23 now. She's not had her garage, and she's had a small kitchen. Those two things, I think she's heaven on earth. If you don't know, mudroom. Where's the mudroom go? Where are we? Right? The garage. Remember the garage? It was our barn for many, many years. Here, we'll go from the garage into the mudroom, into the new area. This will be our new thing. You'll see the shot lots. And we'll go in there and this will be a staging area for the milk supplies mainly. Then towards the end of the year, we had one of those special moments. It came from learning something bad, non-desirable. And we practically quit the grocery store 
overnight. And hopefully it's gonna be a good thing. We are quitting the grocery store. And 2024, next year, is going to be the year of growing food for yeah, us. No it's gonna be incredible. Feet. We'll have our remodel done. We aren't doing traveling events. Actually plan the garden. So over the grocery stores, uh, Whole Foods adding what you call a peel, A-P-E-E-L. Even organic produce has lost, is down to like only 15% of its nutrients. We have this renewed to grow what we're eating and to eat what we're grow, growing. Here's the trick for eating like that. You've gotta plan ahead. You gotta work ahead. It's fall. <laughs> we, we won't plant until the spring. We won't eat until late spring from it. It looks like you didn't use a big enough pan. I let Lily take the lead and this is what she chose. It'll okay. be fine. Yeah, no burn it up cooking show action. You know, it's got 100% of its nutrients. We didn't lose any to the grocery store. That's right. How do you like that? I love it. Number one reason we're growing our own food is health. I've learned that the grocery store produce is got like 15% of what produce picked fresh off the vine at home has. So even organic is not more nutritious. It just has no pesticides or less pesticides. Mm. And coinciding, with this new conviction to grow what we eat and eat what we grow, I get this startling, alarming diagnosis from the doctor saying, or warning saying, my numbers are pre-diabetic. Bad news is I'm pre-diabetic. We had blood work done in June and your A1C was 4.7. And we just had it done. We came out here to be alone. Yeah, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Thought we'd have a moment out here, but maybe not. Two pieces of bad news. So pretty different. So hold on pre a second. So pre but you also had a lot of pain in August and September, and you're still in pain and you're coming out of that now. So because of that, she wants to do a connective tissue, a comprehensive connective tissue blood workup. But for, for, for anybody that doesn't know what that means, which I didn't even know until then, could be a, uh, auto, a auto autoimmune issue. Con connective issue, yeah. Connective tissue. Yeah, because of the problems I've been I've having with joints and you know the flare up that I have. With and the inflammatory I'm response. I'm prone to this kind of thing. But you have inflammation in your body somewhere and it's affecting other issues, it's affecting other things. Like it could, that could be why your glucose and your A1C was high. Yeah. Because of the inflammatory so response. She, like she's saying, the way we eat, you know, I'm eating more like they do now and it's very clean. It's a, uh, you know, I shouldn't have. Uh, These issues. High blood sugar. Well, your um, um, HSCRP so is said, down, but it's not she down. She said I could be genetically enough. prone to that. So, Correct. so basically she cut out my sugar for six months. No weekly dessert yeah, but with you've Lily. You had your sugar cut out. No, honey. And it doesn't seem to. I've help. done it for maybe sixty days. I've never done it for six months. I know, but like, there's no joy. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. I'm gonna have to find joy somewhere else. So I have to make this drastic health change, which will undoubtedly include copious amounts and require copious amounts of food from the farm. Those are the very things my body needs. Mouth breathing at night can raise your blood sugar. So I tape it. That's the second thing I've been doing and that's a glucose monitor. This is the third thing. I forgot to do it before I started training so I'm not do that right now. Newman. Hold your breath. <laughs> Exhale in three, two, one. I wish we were one. running, people. I'm not amazing. Stage three, that's not good. That means I'm not burning fat. Adding protein to your diet is great. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to tell me that. It helps with growth, skin, and muscle repair. 
95% of my diet is protein. The fourth stunt I'm doing to lower blood sugar is to uh, intermittent fast. It's almost 12 o'clock. We try to eat by 12. It's probably gonna be a little late, but intermittent fast. This is the seventh thing. You mean a tablespoon or just a teaspoon? Mm. I'm gonna try not to make a face. Stabilize. Gotta do it right before you eat. So my sixth natural remedy is walking, which should help digestion. It's good for my body. It's definitely gonna be good for the blood sugar. Still one more thing I've added. Yeah, and it's a pharmaceutical. Uh, low dose naltrexin, just before bed. All right, happy day, y'all. We got this new vigor, energy to work on the farm but then to make use of every thing on the farm. Hey baby, are you feeling better? Is this, is this your mule? <laughs> She's got him tied up. Come look at this, Rebecca. Looks so good now. What are you doing? Ouch! <laughs> and so we began the walnut harvest. There you go. Pile the green ones, and we're gonna set them down to crush them. Is that enough? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now, fun job walking on them. We walk so as to not crush the nut knot, but to crush the shell. What is that? <laughs> Sam's got it. Now for the not so fun job. Break them open, get the nuts out, and throw them into the bucket. Papa, he'd have, he'd collect walnuts in him. He'd have his mother make a spice nut cake for really? his birthday. How do you remember that? He told me. Really? That's yeah. special. What you'll do next is soak that. Start loosening off all that flesh. Soak them first, flesh. and then. Yeah, and then run through the compost sifter. See, see how that's coming off of them? We have this tree up here by the people barn. These have already shelled and have revealed their nuts, so hey, why not? All right, put them back in the bucket. I gotta clean that got them though. Do two more rounds, we're good. Whoa! Hey, let's get, hey, let's get it from the hydrant. That's the finished good. Now we just let them sit there and dry out for two weeks. The walnuts have cured. Well, a few days early, but my birthday's coming. But we need a spice nut cake. <laughs> Why not get our nuts from the land, the walnuts? What have we been doing this for, 20 minutes? And this it's is what we got. While. It's been a while. <laughs> it's definitely not a fast process. Yeah. Nuts, though, wouldn't have lost their nutrients, the ones in the store. So that's even more tempting, right, Rebecca? Well, okay. Nuts wouldn't have lost their nutrients. So the problem with the ones in the store. Oh, but they're grown in poor soil. Well, the Ish. ones. Well, hold on a second. The ones with the store, so nuts go rancid. You have to um, put them in the freezer or the cooler, just depending on what nut. Okay. All nuts are different. Walnuts do need to be frozen though. That just took an hour and a half. That's a half a pound. We need 10 pounds of walnuts a year. Is, is approximately what we eat. Honestly, I felt like we could probably get what we need for walnuts in a day of doing this. If we had the correct tools, we could probably get 10 pounds in a day. We have dehydrated these nuts. You want to try some nuts for me back? Smells, smells fruity. And my hunch is they're also going to taste fruity. I don't know if that's because it's fresh or because of the kind it is, but it, it feels superior to me. Do you mind the fruited taste, Rebecca? You don't? I think we're just going to get used to it. It's not like a regular. First on farm harvest of walnuts. Trotters. Pig's feet. Say used to feed this to the dogs. Hey, you want to eat trotters? No. What changed? I was reading in uh, Foxfire, the OG, the original. These old Appalachian. Well, they were all homesteaders. If they didn't grow it, they didn't eat. We are on a mission to grow what we eat. And the second part is key. 
and to eat what we grow. We grew these feet. We grew these. Are we just taking it too far now? Oh, I think it's great. I think that nose to tail eating is the healthiest way to eat. That too. Not just making use of what we grow. The health yeah. benefit. Is there something to it that my worst symptom is pain in my feet? I'm gonna eat feet. Oh, like helps. They say it. if you have <laughs> need help with the heart, eat yeah. heart. If you need help with the liver, eat liver. I need help with the feet, so I'm gonna eat some feet. There, that has fallen off. See now, did the old timers eat the skin? I'm not gonna eat the skin. That's kind of gross. Ooh, look, that's gonna be good. I can tell you that right now. That piece of meat, that's gonna be good. Okay, I see why we don't do that. I spent another 20 minutes siphoning this out. Probably be delicious, but goodness, it took me forever. Probably shouldn't have thrown away the skin. So I work for a little bit of stuff. Okay, here we go. Cartilage, fat, meat. It's like sausage. Okay. All right, who else has some meat? Very soft sausage. Let me have some of that meat. No, that's not meat, that's a bun. Here, let me have some of this meat. Wait, I was getting some. Very little meat in it. It's all cartridge and fat and skin and tendons. Like they were behind something. It's really tasty, the, the, the textures. Okay. Not what we're that's used to. Not it's real good. fatty oh, in its taste right. and its texture. The real banger, though, is how much broth we need from it. I'm gonna have a soup to meet this up. Meat it up, like meat. Put some meat into it. Put some bacon in there from this morning. Put some of their burger that they're having. Put some flossy in there. They'll have the fruit strips still in his hand or the meat no, that's my kind of soup. I would say the most exciting farm build and it's telling of our coming up of better and more positive and freeing energy. I built a pig port 2.0, a composting machine powered by pigs. Winter is coming. You guys can't stay in here all winter. No, the sheep have to come in here. We wanna put the pigs next to the garden so they can work together. Pigs make a compost for the garden. The garden feeding the pig. These are my skids. Pig port because it's portable. We're gonna put the material in there. Have the pigs on deep bedding. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you open it up somehow. We're gonna still figure that out. And we slide this over and the deep bedding is there to be able to be turned. It'll be remaining right here. The port is gone. We turn it and then look, it's lined up for our garden. We have breeder pigs and need them separated sometimes. So we'll actually build two of these, but I'm gonna rate one of these for a 1200 square foot garden plot. Pigs should be able to generate enough compost easy for that, maybe, maybe for two of those, 2400 square feet. Won't that be dreamy to make compost in place with pigs? Have somewhere to throw all those weeds, all that extra produce. Very happy about this. We got some solid work time. We got the walls framed. Well, we're missing two pieces, so. But look, we got one wall and three quarters frame. Look at this. This is gonna go by very fast, but the whole thing will be a deep bedding. We're gonna have a lean-to off the side. You can put it on either side. This is a good site. This just feels right. Special place just for the pigs, the pig port. It lacks a lean-to shed, removable, off to the side so we can store wood chips and keep them dry here. We'll shovel in a little bit of wood chips to keep it nice and fresh to continue to build the compost. Look how they've turned it though. They got a dead chicken. As for grandma, she's still with us and we're thankful for that. She's still involved in the farm able to run errands and things like that. We're not able to eat uh, meals together with them. It has affected her, her mouth. It's a terrible thing. And we're working through it as a family. Rebecca's working through it. We're working with them. We're, we're, we're growing closer to them. We have a renewed appreciation for them. And we're doing the best we can there. For the remodel, it's not going nearly as fast as we thought we had hoped to be in by the end of this year. It's not going to happen. Uh, but it is moving along continually slow and steady we have the new garage framed in eight foot tall doors wider too if we have the garage framed in that means we also got the porch nearly done 10 will go on top of that and then ooh, ooh, check it out 
The locust we harvest from the land is planed. It looks so good, guys. It looks so good, look at this. It's so smooth. I've never seen such beautiful decking. And it came from our hands, our land. And just beyond the garage, generous mud room. Downstairs, the farm kitchen's come along nice. Room for coolers and freezers. Of course, the skylights. I think I've shown you all the skylights. But this is new. Framed in bathroom. Ta-da! There's been a lot of change upstairs. Come with me. Upstairs, the big change. The biggest change. Oh, look at that HVAC system. It's huge and intricate. There's so much. But we're nearly done with that. It's maybe not as fast as we would like it to be going, but I'm gonna choose to look at it this way. We're one day closer to moving in. Oh, and definitely one of the most exciting things for the farm and livestock newbies on the farm is Lily. After one and a half years of horse training and, and, and getting her ready and getting build up that responsibility, she got a horse. Say whoa. And sit tall. Good. There you go. He really listens to your voice, okay? So say whoa. Good. I never in a million years thought my children would be horse people. I had horses growing up. Fell off of them three, four times. Of course, I had. I, we were breaking in. Uh, Broncos. So if you want to face him towards the trailer, let him sniff it. Good. You can make a circle He's not in sure. There. So walk right up to it, and then you can just kind of let him look inside of it. And then once he has a second to understand, you nice. walk right on. Very good. Nice. He's like, I don't need to look. All right, Lily, you just added another boy to your life. <laughs> you didn't have enough? Uh, yeah, I got one. I, huh? didn't, I didn't have a horse. It ah. didn't matter if it was a boy or a girl. Okay. Oh, actually, I'd rather have a boy horse than a girl horse. Oh, would you? Okay, good. Girls have cycles. <laughs> Girls are moody. You don't have to deal with that. That's good. <laughs> hey, well, you're a horse mama now. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a horse dad. Stress me out. I know. Stress me out, man. What do you think of that thing? Oh, so cute. Huh? Like Mom's going to fall in love, too. You think so? Oh yeah. Are you in love? He's so gentle. Are you in love? No. <laughs> but I probably will be. He's oh, so gentle. I'm so glad you're home. He's so gentle. <laughs> There's a horse at the holler again. What is it? My older, older brother used to live in the cabin where we are and he used to have horses here. I mean, that's why our horse, our house is a horse barn. Look at his ears. This is all so new. She's, I like how she's got Jonah working. We, we have to be in the hay. Wait, no, not that area. We brought some of his hay. Thank you, Gideon. We'll let you feed him one, okay? Okay. Oh, he's eating. That's a good sign. He's gonna eat all the whole way here. He wanted to see who Winnie was. There we go. Can he I just can't see apple? in there real good. I'm not even gonna go there. He doesn't need any more excitement. Everybody's out. Everybody's safe. Okay. Jonah's a new boy. Lily's got her horse. I'm feeling as great as ever with this new regiment, newfound conviction for health. We cannot wait to see how much we can grow next year as we quit the grocery store and grow what we're gonna eat and then eat what we grow. It's gonna be 